Found you though. Yeah. You found me. Can I see you closer? Uh, um, you mean you want me to move closer? That's okay. Yeah. How's that? You must have had a very beautiful mother. You must have had a very beautiful mother. <laughs> I did. Thank you. Um, what uh, what is that little box? This is my this is this is my my heart box. This is my my heart box. This is my my heart box. This is my heart box. This is my heart box. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, how are you doing, Dervish? I'm just finding different ways I'm just I'm finding different ways John very good okay so if you're listening I'm talking to uh, Darvish how do you pronounce your surname I'm, I can have a go at it but I prefer if you told me <laughs> let me hear your attempt well, I was going to say Fakir but that doesn't sound right Sounds slightly rude. It's actually pronounced Fach. Oh, with no R. No R sound at all. Slight R at the end. Just to, let me slow it down for you. <laughs> okay, so Darvish Fach. Fach. How did I do with that? That sounds. That's a lot closer. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm talking to Darvish Fach in uh, Brighton in the UK. And just to give you time context for our conversation, for someone to listen in the future, today is Wednesday, the 20th of January, 2020. Sorry, I interrupted you there. What were we going to say? It means pride. Pride. Your yeah. um, surname means pride. Okay, that's nice. And, you're... and my first name means humble. Humble. Okay. Humble. Humble pride. Humble. Humble pride. Humble pride. Humble pride. Humble pride. Humble pride. <laughs> All right. Now, if you're listening, uh, Darvish is talking into a box that's repeating what he's saying. Just if you're wondering what the egg It's not an echo. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's okay. It's like pinning something. It's like pinning something. It's like, it's like pinning something up. Pinning something up on a notice board kind of thing. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Now, for someone uh, listening who hasn't seen your work, how would you describe your paintings or how, or how would, and how would you describe your performance pieces? I think that's a good one for the bag. That's a good one for? That's a good one for the bag. That's a good one for the bag. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. What What do you mean? Oh, okay. Darvish is looking in his bag now. I'll settle. I'll settle for being ignored, Charlie Brown. Right. I'll settle for being ignored, Charlie Brown. I'll settle for being ignored. I like. I like blending. Because I like blending. 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 I, 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 I like blending because it, uh, I feel like it makes me ha, ha, high, high on high, 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 high on hope. Right. You talk, do you mean like blending in paint or just generally blending? Generally. Okay. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> you're um, not going to describe your work then, are you? My work is about yeah. light. Light. 
Okay. My work's about life. I'm interested in a quality of lightness. It's a feel, it's a feel, it's a feel, it's a feeling that I get when I'm at the top of a big jump and I'm just about to come down, but I haven't yet. And there's a brief moment. That's, that is what I'm after in, in all that I do. That, that is what I'm after in, in all that I do. In all that I do. In, 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 in all that I do. Okay. I have some questions that came in on social media. Um, Macarena um, Asensio in Barcelona says, how and why did you move to Britain and why did you settle there? I wanted a change. Change. I wanted a change. I like change. 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 I wanted a change because I found that I needed one. I needed one. And my mother is from Brighton. And I used to come here as a child. And I hated it. <laughs> and I used to come here as a child. And I hated it. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Um, just to kind of put your artistic sensibilities in context, who are your creative heroes? Have you ever seen, you might not know their work. They're Starling. Do you know them? No. They're Starling. They're Starling. They fly over the pier in murmurations. Oh, the bird. I know the bird. <laughs> I thought it was a band or something. You know them then? I know Starlings, yeah. I don't know everyone, but I know them. <laughs> I know them collectively. They have a way of flying together, but without a leader. But without a leader. They don't have a they don't have a they don't have a leader. But without a leader. No leader. So they just react to the air currents as they come and they keep their peripheral vision open to include their companions and they move together but without a leader. And they're your artistic heroes? Yeah, they are. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else? Let me ask the bag. Let me ask the bag. Let me ask the bag. My ancestors. My ancestors who came before me. I'm always looking for a way to draw them out. I'm always looking for a way to draw them out. Always looking for a way to draw them out. If I can include them, then there's a lot more to me. A lot more to me. Because I came from somewhere and they are they're part of that artistic experience for me. It's not separate, John. It's not separate, John. Yeah. Okay. Now, anything else you want to say on that before I ask you another question? One more thing is that the best way for me to access those ancestors is through breathing. Breathing, breathing, breathing. And music. music, 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 
You see? Okay. That's all I need to say about that. <laughs> all right. Um, Caroline Bichet in Florence says, Hi, thanks for introducing me slash us to such a brilliant artist, John. Darvish, uh, what was your training as a painter? I learned a lot in Boston. I would say my style, my style of painting is very much of Boston, 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 Boston. Of Boston, 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 Boston. Boston, Massachusetts, which is where I grew up. And I would go next door to the Museum School of Fine Arts. Sorry, to the Museum of Fine Arts. I was in the museum. I was in the museum. I was in the museum school next door, next door. I was in the museum school next door. Next door. But I would go over to the museum next door to paint and to copy and to draw a lot. And that museum is full of delicious sergeants, delicious sergeants. And I would go and I would do all that I can to become part of those works. The way that I absorb work is different, though. I don't always copy or always draw. I like to find the movements in every painting and work work them into my body and that way I can digest them better. I can digest them better. I can digest them better. Does that make sense? Uh, it does. Uh, I sort of have it, but could you explain a bit about absorbing them into your body a bit more? Yeah. Every painting, every piece of nature has a certain, yeah, like a, like a, like a vibration, you know, like a, like a certain energy, certain energy, certain energy, certain energy. okay? And if you can find those lines and they draw the lines they're painted they're given to you they're structural those guys have put in that stuff for you to follow it's like surfing you eyes their eyes can they can they can sweep they can stutter they can jut and if you can, they can somehow they can they can they can if you can, they can somehow they can if you can somehow move like that, then it's not just cerebral. Cerebral. It's, cerebral. it's not just cerebral. Uh -huh. That better? So do you actually move like when you're painting? Are you kind of moving as well? I don't mean just moving your paintbrush, but I mean moving your whole body to try and get that vibration into what you're doing. Always moving, John. Always moving. Okay. Do you want to say anything else about your training as a painter? It's, it's like a language, you know? And I just had to learn the alphabet. And then you use the alphabet to make the words. But the words are from an old language. From an old language. It's an old language of form. It's an old language of form, John. Language of form. It's an old language of form. Language of form. It's an old language. It's an old language. It's an old language. And I, 
I wanted to speak that language because I wanted to be able to express my excitement for form, the excitement that I have when light hits an object and, and peels around it. And the painters that do that so well, like Van Dyck, and Velasquez, and Manet, and Sargent. 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 They would really show me how to put those words together. All right. Anything else on training? Paul Rahilly and Lou Geppetto were my teachers in Boston. And in London, I studied with Paul Arrego. Paul Arrego, Paul Arrego, Paul Arrego, Paul Arrego, Paul Arrego. Paul Rahilly and Lou Geppetto were my teachers in Boston. And in London, I studied with Paul Arrego. Very good. All right. So if you're listening, um, if you didn't know about Darvish, he, he uh, as he said, he studied in Boston, but he also studied in the Slade School. Um, his work's been included in the National Portrait Gallery, uh, it, the gallery's uh, BP Portrait Award. He's been in the Portrait Award exhibition four or five times. Um, he's won quite a few awards. So he's quite a, uh, an accomplished uh, painter. Um, Caroline also says, do you feel there's been an evolution in your technique and goals? And if yes, how and why? Caroline, it's not about the technique. Not about the technique. It's about, it's about, about the technique. It's about getting yourself, getting yourself, getting yourself getting yourself in a state of mind yourself in a state of mind to re to receive to be receptive to, re to receive to be receptive and the rest you can google that <laughs> so how much time should um, she focus or one focus on the ABCs you were talking about at the, um, when you were saying about learning the language. Because I think what, when she's saying about technique, that's the kind of ABCs, really. If we're starting with the alphabet, I would start by keeping it really, really simple. I would keep it so simple, so simple, so simple. I would paint just something simple, something round, a fruit, an, ap an apple, an apple, pull an apple, an apple, an pull apple. An apple. But look at it, pull an apple, and look at that, pull an apple, and look at that apple, and spend time with it, and find a way to make the light. wrap around the apple. If you can make the light wrap around your apple with your brushes, then you are showing me what it feels like to hold it. That's what I want. That's what I want to look at. I want to know what it feels like for you to hold, to hold, to hold, to hold that apple. To hold that apple. To hold that apple. So light is important. Edges are important. Edges are important. And I don't mean to separate. The, the, the separation is what keeps it from feeling like it is part of a space. But having the courage to blow up your edges. The edges. Blow them up. Blow up your edges. The edges. Blow them up. Because... Actually, we are all part of the same 
tame. Thing. What do you mean when you say blow up your edges? Can you can you explain that a little bit more? Edges in nature play with you. They play hide and seek. Hide and seek. Sometimes you see them. Hide and seek. Sometimes you don't. Hide and seek. But they're always playing hide and seek. You gotta look for the. You gotta look for where they go away. You think they're always there because you think a hat's a hat. But look at it again, and you might notice that you can let those edges disappear and become part of the thing next to it or the background. And by doing that, you're forming. You're forming a revolution, a kind revolution. All right. Um, okay. Anything else on tech on the evolution of your uh, goals in art? Yeah. But let me ask the bag. Let me ask the bag. Let me ask the bag. The art world, art world always throws me back into the ocean. It's always throwing me back. It's been throwing me back and throwing me back. It's been throwing me back and throwing me back. So now I'm at peace with that. And you know what? I like the ocean more. I like the ocean more. I like the ocean more. It's my home. We are water. We come from water. Drink more water. So was it a goal of yours in the past to get caught, <laughs> using your analogy, to get caught by the art world, like to get into it? And that's yes. changed now? Yes. John, that is very important because that happened and it was unhealthy. My body start my body start my body started to protest. Protest. My I was using my body like a slave. Where slavery exists, we are you. We are using our bodies to to do what we think we need to do, and we rarely give back. Now I'm giving back. Now I'm giving back. Now I'm giving back. Now I'm giving back. Okay. So how does the idea for a painting start for you? And is that process, that origin process, is it different for a performance piece? They're, they're all the same for me, John. I, I like to grab snapshots of my life and pile them on top of each other and blow them up and let new ones come in. I draw a lot. I don't usually paint from photos. I like to paint from my drawings. My drawings are like the, are like the, are like the choreography. Choreography. Yeah, my drawings are like the choreography.
And for your performance pieces, is it the same? Do they start with drawings or something else? They don't really start or end necessarily. So are they more uh, situational, meaning you sort of ha gather some elements, one of you, you being one of those elements, put them in a particular situation and then see what happens. Is that more how it goes? I like to use the space that I'm in and include it in everything that I'm doing. I like to use the space that I'm in and animate it. I like to animate it. Animate it. When I was a kid, my mother used to take me to see these ducks. Every day I'd ask her to take me to the ducks. And later I asked her, I said, Mom, how come those ducks were always there? Every day they were there. For five years, they were there. Five years, they were there. Five years, they were there. She said, no. They weren't real. They were just sculptures, Darvish. They weren't real. They were just sculptures, Darvish. They weren't real. They were just sculptures, Darvish. They weren't real. They weren't real. They weren't real. But they were real to me. I put on some music, John? Uh, no, better not, because it stuffed up the audio earlier on <laughs> when it was on. Made it go okay. weird. Um, okay. So when you start a painting, it sounds like you don't do color studies or grisailles or anything like that. You just get straight into it, do you? I don't like to do it the same way twice. Same way twice. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll take my time. Sometimes I won't. I try not to get in the way of my own work too much. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll take my time. Sometimes I won't. I try not to get in the way of my own work too much. All right. Do you have, um, these are very granular painter questions, but I'll just ask them anyway, because a lot of people who listen are artists and they like to know this kind of thing. Um, do you have a favorite color palette that you always start off with? Hold on, John. What was the question? So I was asking about um, favorite color palette, or do you have a favorite color palette that you st always start with? I know you said it's different each time, but sometimes artists, they have their favorite color palette. So what's your palette like? I've got... Cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow light. Cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow deep. Cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow deep. Deep. I've got yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. I've got Indian yellow. I say it like that because of my love for it. It's the only transparent yellow. Transparent yellow. They used to make it from cow manure after feeding them mango leaves. Transparent yellow. Indian yellow. Cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow, said that. Cadmium red, light, cadmium red, cadmium light. Yellow. Cadmium red, cad, 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 cadmium red, light. Cad, 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 cadmium red, li light. 
Venetian red. Alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson. What a beautiful, beautiful name. Alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson. Shavingham Blue Light. Shavingham Blue Light is my favorite color on the palette. I'll show it to you. Yep, very nice. It's the color I like most. It's the color I draw with when I need to put in specific shapes. Uh, 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 ultramarine blue. Blue, blue, blue. Ultramarine blue. Permanent sap green. Permanent sap green. No blacks. No blacks. No okay. blacks. No blacks. I haven't had black on my palette for about 20 years. Okay. Do you have a, your own, a lot of people who don't use black, they have their own special mix that they use for black. I've got a special mix, John. <laughs> I've got a special mix, John. I've got a special mix, John. Any other questions? Oh, okay. You're not going to tell me your special mix. <laughs> If you're thinking to yourself, God, I'm really enjoying this podcast. I've listened to a few now and they're brilliant. And there's so many of them. And I've learned so much from listening to them. And you know what? If I met that John Dalton fellow in real life, I'd love to buy him a cup of tea and have a chat with him. I'd love to do that every month if I could. Well, now you can. The tea part, at least, because this podcast runs on cups of tea bought for me by people like you who listen to the podcast and send me the price of a cup of tea once a month through the Patreon account. That's patreon.com forward slash John Dalton gently does it all one word. And if you're one of those people who already send me cups of tea through Patreon, thanks a million. The tea is lovely and I really appreciate it. Now, the great thing is that if you can't afford to send me the price of a cup of tea or you don't want to, that's fine. You still get exactly the same podcast for free. It's sort of an honor system where the people who can afford it and want to pay for the people who can't or don't want to. So it's all lovely. So if you'd like to send me a cup of tea once a month, you can do that through Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. It makes a huge difference to me. Um, okay. What, what, what's your white? What white do you like to use? Lead. Lead white. You can't no, get it white. anymore. You can't get it anymore. You can't get it anymore. You can't get it anymore. It's illegal. It anymore. It's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to use. It's illegal. Don't use it. I love it. So I love do you it. have a do you have a stash of it somewhere? Do you have enough to last you the rest of your life? I have a fridge full in Texas. Yeah. I have a fridge full. <laughs> I have a my fa my fa my father, my father is tending it in San Antonio. <laughs> tending it from being a little leaves um yeah it's like anyone who's got is into lead white they seem to have a stash of it somewhere and um, with all those cadmiums are you concerned for your health like do you wear gloves and stuff when you paint no 
I don't wear gloves and I don't give it a lot of thought. I don't wear gloves. I don't give it a lot of thought. I don't wear gloves. Do you have a particular medium that you like to use? My special sauce. Okay. Steez. This is one part, one part, one part, one part stand oil. One part, one part. One part Damar varnish. One part Damar varnish. One part. One part, one part. And then three parts, three parts herb. Three parts herb. Okay. And then I shake it all up. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Um, right. Do you have a favorite type or make of brush or palette knife you just love to use? This is my favorite brush. <laughs> All right. If you're watching, if you're listening, um, uh, Darvish is um, brushing his beard with a, that's a wallpaper brush, I think. <clears throat> Correct. My palette knife. This is my favorite. This is my favorite palette knife. Wow, that's a very what's what? Do you know the name of that shape? I don't. <laughs> it's a. It's kind of square with rounded edges. It's called comfortable. <laughs> okay. Comfortable. Um. How do you check yourself as you're working? Like a lot of artists, you have a lot of different things they'll do. They'll turn the canvas upside down. They'll maybe take pictures with their phone. They use mirrors. They'll be jumping back and forth a lot. They'll get friends in to ask them, squinting, critiques. What do you do? I, I don't turn my paintings upside down. I go upside down. I go upside down. <laughs> okay. Is that all you do or do you do anything else? Um, I also take photos of the painting with my, with my, with my, with my, with my iPhone. My iPhone. And I okay. look at not the photos, but the thumbnail. thumbnail. The thumbnail. The thumbnail. The thumbnail. 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 Gives me a good idea. All right. Um, Paul uh, Levin in Sweden says, you recently posted an older painting of a pile of trash that you left outside the Tate Modern. My question is how you painted the spray paint graffiti tags on the wall in the background. Did you use spray paint for it? I used spray paint for it. Okay. Um, Antoine Renault in France says, thanks so much, John, for introducing us to this amazing creative creature. It's uh, a true joy to watch. As a, skateboarder natro, as a skateboarder native, I love it all. From the flying carpet to the high jumps and the uh, palimpsest, I have trouble saying pronouncing that word, kind of work. Palimpsest, palimpsest kind of work. Uh, Darvish, what wheels are you flying on? They remind me of my good old green kryptonites. Hold on, let me go check. Hold on, let me go check. Hold on. Hold on. You last did look fan. Here. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> All right, Darvish's uh, skateboard slash magic carpet is shyly coming out from under a table. Ah, oh, I love the way that moves. It's ABEC 11s, my wheels. ABEC 11s, all right, good. Um, he also says, the more I explore your whole personal universe, the more your painting looks like the most conservative part of your art life. Is that the way you'd look at it? And if yes, how comes? 
I had to learn all those rules. <laughs> I had to learn all those rules. So now I'm just fucking with them. That's why. But so you gotta do you, learn the rules first. Do you see do you see it as a play. conservative part of your art life? No. It feels like an extreme sport. <laughs> okay. It feels like an extreme sport, John, because I put myself in very uncomfortable situations and make moves that make or break make or break the picture for the day. And yeah. I find extreme sports to be a form of meditation because you need to be so present so that you don't mess up. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, it's great. It's a great analogy. Um, right, composer and multi-keyboardist and an artist, Andrew Rodell asks, what are your thoughts about your breathing? Um, your gestures are very legato. How do you vary your rhythms and dynamics? It's wonderful to watch you move in inverted commas. It's like, remember what I was saying about the starling? Starlings, yes. It's like that, but I'm using, I'm using, I'm using, I'm using the breath to dictate the movement. I wish we could play some music, John. <laughs> I'll drink some water instead. All right. Um, Andreas uh, Muri in Norway, whose Instagram name is Sugar Dispenser, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. And he looks like an Irish Viking. He's got mad big red hair. <laughs> so go and have a look at Andreas's um, <laughs> Instagram, everyone. Anyway, he says, hi, Dervish. Uh, I recently started to follow your page. So my question might not hit the mark. Uh, I'm going to guess that you've done or tried yoga in the past. How do you breathe when dancing fluidly like you do? Do you believe it's possible to loosen up the body and mind like with yoga with the fluid dancing? Do you believe there's something extra experienced with the dancing that's missed with yoga? And with yoga here, I mean all of yoga, uh, pranayama, asana, meditation, and so on. Yo, 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 yoga, yoga. Yoga has been a big part of my life, big part, but I don't see it separate part, but I don't see it separate. It seems like everything is yoga. Everything is yoga. It's a mind state and you're breathing will give you the in. Your breathing will give you the in because that's where the ancestors live. You, we come from a tribe. We come from a tribe. Come from a tribe. You know what I'm talking about, Carlos. We come from a tribe and we have to honor all the members. And the breathing with the movement allows you to not repeat yourself so much. We're always repeating ourselves. Always repeating ourselves. Always repeating ourselves. Always repeating ourselves. So I use the movement as a way of 
feeling alive, feeling alive. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bishan Singh in India says, tell him he's super cool. Um, heart emoji. Um, so I'm passing that on. But uh, you had something on your Instagram stories where you were talking about the idea of cool and how it's projected onto you. Is that something you're thinking about at the moment? Is that a, a thing? I think it's funny that people use that word for me because I never felt cool. I've always been outcast. It's always been hard for me to connect in a way because I grew up, 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 I grew up as an only child. I made my inner verse rich. I made my inner verse rich. I made my inner verse rich. Rich. But it came at an expense. You see? It came at an expense. It was hard for me for a long time to connect to people. I'm better at it now. I got my truth box. I got my water. And I got my music. I'm better at it now. Okay, Erin Elizabeth O'Neill in Chicago says, okay, I actually need to know where you got your plaid tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to ask the most beautiful, the smartest, most intelligent, funniest woman on earth. My wife. My wife. My okay. wife. It was a birthday present. Oh, uh, that's right. Your birthday was quite recent, wasn't it? It was a couple of days ago. It's not now. <laughs> well, happy, happy belated birthday. Um, can you tell me a bit, a little bit about your collaboration with the photographer Hugh Fox? I love Hugh Fox. <laughs> I love Hugh Fox. We get together, we don't really plan much, but we keep things open. And when you keep things open, stuff happens. Stuff happens. Things line up in a way that you could try to spend days in a studio with, but we like to take it outside. We like to, we like to do it in the streets. You is the only person who can meet up with me, laugh with me, and then leave half an hour later with at least 50 good photos. He's a one-take master. The one-take master. That's great. Um, there is an overarching theme, though, about lightness of being or something along that lines, though, isn't there? Yeah, we are all about that. Trying to offer a different way of feeling about things. Everybody's pretty wrapped up in stuff these days and um, we're just imagine if it didn't matter imagine if it didn't matter what would that look like what would that feel like imagine <laughs> It 
Very good. Um, Sevji in Turkey says, how do you approach an artist when you want to collaborate? And Salam from Turkey and sending love. What do you say? Uh, how do you approach an artist when you want to collaborate with them? It's like a missing color on your palette. If you feel you need to add another element to your expression. Expression. And that artist has that element. Element. That element. element, that element that you're looking for. That's how. That's how. Now. Right. That sounds like why you would collaborate with them. But he, I think he's kind of asking, like, do you, you know, how do you actually do it? Do you email them? Do you go and sit outside their house? Or <laughs> I don't know. What do you do? I'll just message them. Message them. Okay. He also asks, um, what are good slash bad decisions you made regarding your works and your environment? You kind of touched on that a little bit earlier on when you were talking about the art world, but there's anything else about good and bad decisions you made regarding your works and environment? I haven't made any bad decisions, John. Okay. Except for one. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I wish, I wish I had taken better care of my teeth. Of my teeth. Of my teeth. But artistically... Nah. I just, I'm happy I caught myself, you know? I caught myself in time. My body was retreating. My body said, you're going to keep working me like this. I'm not going to let you do all those fun things you like to do. Those fun right. things you like to do. I'm not going to let you roll the skin. I'm not going to let you roll the skin. <laughs> Hey, Anna, you're a down. very good roller skater. I'm so impressed with your roller skating skills. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what makes it easy. You know what makes it easy. I, I don't. You listen to the music, right. but listen, huh? To really listen, because if your body's listening to the music, it's in a different state. You're not trying so hard. You're letting all those, you're letting that team come through. Yeah. All right. That's what I would like to tell the artists out there. I have, I believe, I have, I believe, I have about a hundred people, a hundred people working for me in my studio. And I give them tasks based on who shows up that day. If the guy who is only good at cleaning brushes shows up that day, I do not tell him to paint hands. I just, I just, I just, I just will let him clean all my brushes that day. That's it. And sometimes I have a different guy, the guy who knows how to do underpaintings. That's a different guy, but they all work for me. And I try to set myself up, to set myself up. So that when I come back into the studio, when I come back in, everything has been laid out for me. Everything has been laid out for me by my assistants. Everything has been laid out for me by my assistants. So all I have to do is pick up the brush, squeeze the paint, and start. Okay. Um. Sevji, his final question is, will there be an exhibition of yours in Turkey, in Istanbul, at any stage? I would love that. I would love that. I would love that. 
I have a plan. And I would love that. I have a plan to have an exhibition at the end of February online. It'll be a virtual exhibition. Virtual exhibition. Virtual. Virtual exhibition. It will be for three months and it will be called Flux. Flux. Okay. Um, and if somebody wants to see that, how will they be able to do that? They have to go to my website. Okay. Do you know what my website is? Uh, well, I know there's darvish.com, but I don't know if you've got other ones. Do you know why I have that name? Do you know Darvish. why? My website. I got darvish.com. Do you know what my website is? No, I don't. <laughs> my best friend, Brian Heffernan. Got it for me before anybody knew what a website was. Got it for me before anybody knew what a website was. And he's been paying for it ever since. I have very good friends. Very good friends. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Heffernan sounds it's a very Irish name. Is he um, of Irish extraction? Most definitely. Okay. In Boston, there are a lot of... <sighs> a lot of Irish people. Okay. Um, right. Trevor Thomas in Colorado says, what was a defining moment in your traje trajectory as an artist? Ooh. That's a good question, Trevor. I think we're going to ask the bag. <laughs> That's not it. You're disagreeing with the bag now. That's yeah. not good. <laughs> oh, no. Darvish is falling out with the bag. <laughs> we're going off the bag. <laughs> You're going off beast. Okay. <laughs> My uncle in Isfahan, Iran, said to me, he said, don't hold on so tightly. He said, everybody's holding on so tightly, but we are just flying through space, flying through space on a rock. On a rock. What happens if you just fly with it? And I started playing with all oh, this is so much better. better because I could just enjoy the ride. So I stopped taking things too seriously, John. That changed me. That helped a lot, Trevor. What age were you when that happened? 25. Okay, nice. Nice to get that at that age. Um, and I meant to ask you, what age were you when you realized, or your body made you realize that you weren't really enjoying the art world in the way that you were engaged with it? How long ago is that? That's been a slow, slow process, John. Slow process, John. Slow. But I would say a big factor for me was when was when what was when I started working with Akram Khan, Akram Khan, Akram Khan. Right. That that's an artist, is it? He is a contemporary choreographer and dancer. Oh, okay. The National Gallery asked me to paint his portrait, portrait. because portrait. they wanted him on their walls because he is a great man. He is a great man. And he, he, is has, a great 
he has he has he has he has done a lot for contemporary dance. So I went to his rehearsals to study him. And I discovered that the body can be you 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 used to tell a story about yourself. So that changed things for me. That changed things for me. Um, someone on Instagram is asking you the spelling of his name. Could you, is that, have they got that right? A-K-R-A-M-K-H-A-N? Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Great. That's Akram. <laughs> okay. Um, if there was one underlying theme to all your work, what do you think it would be? I think I'm going to give the bag one more. <laughs> Try okay. I'm going to give the bag one more chance. Freedom. Okay. And uh, do you want to say any more about that or just freedom? That's enough. <laughs> okay. Um, Paul Levin in Sweden uh, says, with the painting of the pile of trash that you left outside the Tate Modern, uh, you were upset with the art world. It'll be interesting to hear what upset you. They kept throwing me back in. Okay. They didn't like me. They still don't. They don't know what to do with me. I don't know why they don't like me so much. But I'm okay with it. I'm at peace with it. I'm at peace with it. Yeah, well, as you say, like you, to use you, you're using that analogy of being thrown back in, uh, which is like fishing. I hear it anyway. I mean, you wouldn't want to be caught by them, really. <laughs> well said. I couldn't uh, agree more. Um, so your your wife, who you mentioned earlier on, is a Layla is a creator and uh, a cu creator, a curator, um, and worked with the Tate for many years. And she's got her own curation um, business now called the C Collectors Editions. Very nice work. Um, but that strikes me as a, a a very unique perspective for an artist to have because you're going to see in both sides of the art world from the curator side and from your own side as an artist. We help each other a lot, John. She helps me see things in a way that mm, I wouldn't get it. I, I wouldn't get it. And she shows me the way that it is to others. I wouldn't get it. And she shows me the way that it is to others. And I show her other things too you know i show her the way maybe something is lit up how nice that is oh there are questions on my live here john yeah i've been keeping an eye on them hello dear zara that painting behind me is elon He's my eight-year-old boy. I don't know how long it will look like that for, though. I don't know how long it will look like that for, though. I don't know. Like that for, though. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like that for, though. I don't know. I read somewhere that you were saying that 
Um, your grandfather and your wife, Layla's grandfather, they were great friends. Is that right? Did I get that right? They were best friends. They were best friends. They were such good, good friends, John, that they, that they, that they, that they, that they would sit together. They would sit together and say, they would sit together and say nothing. Oh, uh, right. They said it all. They said it all. They needed to say. They just enjoyed each other's company. And when I met my wife, I let those ancestors in. I right. let those ancestors in. And did you know, like, where, the, where both your grandparents, uh, grandfathers in uh, Iran, was that where they were friends? Or was it somewhere else? Or, and did you know, like, when you met your wife that, oh, yeah, our grandfathers knew each other? Or was it something you discovered? My grandfather and Leila's grandfather were best friends in Isfahan, Iran. Okay. I didn't know of Leila until I was much older, though, because she had her life there and in Ger Germany, and in Germany, and I had my, my life in Boston. My life in Boston. But my father said, you have to come and visit Iran and see where I'm from and understand where I'm from. And that's how I met Layla. Uh, and that's how I met Layla. My mm -hmm. father and her father are also very close friends. And her brother and myself were close friends. And he would speak of his sister. And then I met her. And the night I, the night I met her, I told my father's friend, I said, I said, I said, I said, I had just, I had just met. Just met. My wife. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, Antoine Renault in France again says, Darvish. You say uh, a piece is never finished until it leaves your studio. How do you manage this when you sell online? Then in brackets, he says, sorry for this very terrestrial question. I like terrestrial. But I don't have a problem with people owning my paintings. My paintings, for me, are always finished. If I sell one, and they buy it and they like it and they like it and they like it, they can keep it. If they don't like it, they can give it back to me and I'll keep working on it. I'll keep working on it. <laughs> the problem is they might not like the way it changes. There's no need to have a finished painting anymore there's no need to have a finished painting anymore we're on a continuum i don't see artists being separate i don't i don't i don't see them being separate i don't see this artist and this artist and this artist and this artist i don't see it as different egos I see it, I see it, I see it as one artist, one evolving form of expression. Of expression. Of expression. Can you talk a little bit about this idea of uh, palimpsest and how you've, can you explain it for someone who doesn't know what it is? And can you just explain how you use it in your work? You've just kind of touched on there. It's the textures on walls. It's the layering that is revealed. It's the writing that comes through. It's the writing that comes through. It's the writing that comes through. But I like to use it pictorially. So 
I never feel, I never, I, I, I never, I never, I never feel, I never feel like I've actually lost anything. Lost anything. The painting always remembers. The painting always remembers and it shows up. It shows up in a way that you not expect. So I strip my paintings back a lot and I often discover things underneath that are now part of the present. Underneath that are now part of the present. Underneath the present. The present. Layla is at home. She's making magic in the kitchen no doubt <laughs> that was in response to a question on instagram somebody was saying where is layla now uh what sort of price range are your paintings selling for these days they range from 900 up to 10 grand 10 grand depending okay, on the size depending on the size and depending on the time, depending on the time, some, depending on the time, the time is important. The time is important, John. Some paintings, even though I might finish the surface image in a day, I've been working on for years, and there are layers underneath there. So a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it has to do with, you know. The time. Yeah, that's pound sterling. Um, if you're listening, that the prices that Dar Darvish was saying. When you think about all the paintings uh, you've made or the performance pieces that you've done, is there one that stands out for you that was particularly moving for you to make? I I went. I was in. I was in invited. I was invited to see Aladdin in London. And I afterwards, I went to, to the streets and in front of a pub, imagined that nobody could see me. Could see me. If I could make myself somehow disappear. Could see me. So I walked by them all as though the edge of the pavement <laughs> were a giant cliff. I've seen the video for this, it's brilliant. <laughs> and nobody saw me. Nobody saw me. I felt that one was important to me because I often feel that way. I am um, from looking at that video. What I got was that that they did actually see you, but that you didn't seem out of the ordinary to them. That it was just like, oh, there's Darvish, <laughs> just you know, and they just kept talking. I think. When People see me in public. The first question, the first question, the first question, that, the first question that comes into their mind, the first question that comes into their mind is, is he dangerous? And if they see that I'm not dangerous, then they just get on with their life. And some will notice me, some will not, and others will intentionally ignore me. Ignore me, ignore me. I'm okay with all of it. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, a couple of Quick questions. Um, 
someone's asked on Instagram if you have a child. You you just said you have you have two boys, isn't that right? I've got two boys. I've got Elon and Pasha. <laughs> okay. Uh, someone else says, "Do you speak more than one language?" I speak very very little language altogether altogether my language skills are my language skills are poor language skills are poor. that's why that's why i need this that's why i need the this. translator i mean the translator the translator but i do speak a bit of farsi farsi my father didn't speak to me as a child in farsi i had to learn it later to woo Layla. <laughs> Layla. <laughs> well, what Layla. better reason to learn a language? <laughs> uh, somebody is asking if you are coming to Iran. I'll get there. You'll get there. All right. What are you working on now that no one else knows about? I think everybody knows everything about me now <laughs> okay open book very good do you have a big art dream you'd like to achieve before you die i just want to keep doing what i'm doing i just want to keep doing what i'm doing i just want to keep doing what i'm doing um what's the biggest challenge you're facing at the moment as an artist Getting people to see my work. People to see my work. It's different. It's different. It's different when I take a picture of my work. You know? It's different. It's just when I have an exhibition. When I have an exhibition. I allow people to, 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 to touch my paintings. I'm not bothered about their mark. I like to include it as part of the palimpsest. Palimpsest. So when they are seeing my work through Instagram or anything else, it's not the same. Not the same. These things have a heartbeat they have a they have time on them layers of time and that can't be it cannot it, it cannot be it cannot be conceived not be conceived in any other way but to stand in front of it yeah have you ever done anything um, where you've basically made a, made made a, a visual a painting, and and put it on, uh, say Instagram, and said, uh, "Why don't you embellish this and send it back to me, and then I'll post it again, and someone else can embellish it and post it back to me, and just and build it up in that way." You know, kind of. I suppose that's a very lockdowny kind of way of thinking about it. But <laughs> have you ever done anything like that? No, but. I like that idea, John. Oh, I like that idea, John. <laughs> okay. Um, have you noticed, though, with your performance work that you're able to reach a lot more people with um, Instagram and Facebook and that kind of thing? And does that change it for you? Well, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can reach a lot more people now. And I like to see if I cannot be, 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 I cannot be affected by that. Yep. How's that going? It's fun. It's fun. No, how's, the, how's the not being affected by it going? It's great. It's great. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Um, okay, right. This is my last question. We got to the end. I ask this to everybody who comes on the podcast, right? 
Um, if there's one thing you could pass on to future generations, what would it be? I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to take, take this opportunity, take this opportunity to quote Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle. Life, life is not as serious. Life is not as serious as the mind makes it out. Life is not as serious as the mind makes it out to be. Out to be. That's it. That's it. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> so, as you said, your website is darvish.com and you're on Instagram and Facebook as well. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's been an experience <laughs> chatting with you. Um, I think your art You told me, you told me, John, you told me you wanted to have a chat the yeah. way you would with me in a pub so when i go to pubs this is what i like to do <laughs> when i go to pubs this is what i like to do when I go okay to pubs. <laughs> um yeah well as soon as um, i want to thank Anne mcgill for um that telling me about you uh because going onto your feed was uh, so refreshing and then to see your paintings as well. And surprisingly, you don't have a huge amount of your older paintings on your Instagram. And they're definitely worth looking at. There's some lovely portraits. Um, I don't even know if they're on your website or where they are, but definitely it's if you're listening and you want to find out more about Darvish's work, there's a certain amount. You kind of have to look in a few different places, but it's all very worth looking at. And your Instagram feed itself, the whole thing is like one big piece of art. Um, but it's very uplifting and very joyful. And I really appreciate that. And I appreciate that you do it. Thank you, John. Thank you. And thank you, Anne, for connecting me with this wonderful person. Um, okay. Well, as I say, it's been lovely chatting with you. Um, and, you know, I keep in touch with everybody. So I'm sure we'll keep in touch in the future. But for now, uh, we'll say goodbye. Okay. Bye, everybody. I've never felt this good in my entire life. Make me some spaghetti. Actually, I'd prefer a cup of tea. <laughs> a cup of tea would be lovely. So, yeah, just a little reminder, mainly because every second or third person who becomes a patron has got in touch with me and said, you know what, I've been listening to your podcast for ages. And I didn't become a patron, not because I don't have the money, not because I don't think it's great. I just didn't get around to it. So this is a little friendly reminder that if you'd like to be a patron, you'd like to buy me a cup of tea, go to patreon.com forward slash John Dalton. Gently does it all one word or follow the link in the show notes to become a patron. I would really appreciate it if you could do that, particularly if you've been meaning to and you just haven't got around to it. It would be great. It would mean a lot to me. All right. Thank you. Bye. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. We're better than you thought, but not as good as we think. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. Come on, buy us a drink. Come on, buy us a drink. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. We're better than you thought, but not as good as we think. We are the Argyle